So the question is, uh, what would I think if the public were to act as the uh, jury and uh, establish a verdict in criminal cases? Um, I'm a little concerned about that. I, I don't like the public doing that. The public can often act as a mob and uh, mob mentality can take over and the process of deliberating and hearing the evidence is a very important process that takes time and concentration that the public at large can't undertake. But if the public were to be asked to be the jury, I would want to explain to the public the Asper Beaker of Proof so that the public would understand what is the burden of proof? What has to be established? How much proof is necessary before it's legitimate to condemn, to label somebody a criminal and to punish them as a criminal? And the beaker of proof is just like a beaker, like you had in science class. And if the Crown Attorney pours water into that beaker and fills it up, and the defense lawyer pokes little holes and so some of the evidence comes out, so that the net amount of evidence is, let's say, 75 milliliters, is that enough? Is that enough to establish proof beyond a reasonable doubt? And I'd want to talk to the public about that. The common law, over hundreds and hundreds of years, has struggled with the question about what is the meaning of proof beyond a reasonable doubt? What are the words that we use? And uh, the uh, judges have been given very specific language to use when they're charging a jury uh, as to what those words are. Um, and uh, you can find those words on the Canadian Judicial Council website. And if you are planning on being a member of the jury, I would encourage you to read those words and consider them very carefully. Don't interpret them. Don't try to say them in your own language, because that's where cases fall into error. The words are stated as they are, they're stated as best we can, as human beings, we're imperfect, so we have to try to find some standard that we're comfortable with before we label and condemn people as criminals.